Welcome to Rise and Shine Daily Business Tech Boost with me, Charlie Latham. If you're a small business owner looking to simplify technology and get real, actionable advice from someone with 35 years of IT experience, you're in the right place. Every episode, I'll dive into tools and systems like email, CRM, marketing and tracking, and break them down into bite-sized tips you can use right away. Your time is valuable, so let's get straight to the point. It's time to work smarter, not harder. Rise and shine. It's your daily dose of business tech inspiration with me. Charlie Latham. Episode number 435 today and we are going to be talking about delegating Microsoft 365 inboxes. What do we mean by delegating and what does that all mean? So it is possible that you can have another user manage your inbox on your behalf without having to log in to your inbox. What that means is that they can, from their own inbox, look at your inbox, be able to manage your email, categorize it, maybe respond to it, certainly tag things to say you need to look at it, be able to raise uh, the, the, the priority of something or raise something to your attention. So if you are a busy person uh, and you know, if you've got an EA or if you've got a VA, PA working for you who, who can do all these things without giving them your username and password, which is them access to your whole Microsoft account, you can give them access to your inbox and let them see your mail or your, your mail account and let them see your, your mail account. That's why you want to do it. It is uh, another way of improving your own productivity. You do need to get your Microsoft administrator to do this for you. You can't do this from your own Outlook account. So let, let's get in and have a look at it, shall we? I'm going to swap over to the right screen. There we go. There we go. So again, we're back in our Microsoft Admin, admin Center. Uh, we have... Uh, 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 we're in our Microsoft Admin Center, admin.microsoft.com. I'm not going to log in. You do need a admin user to be able to do this, someone who's got the access to do this level of change. To add a delegation or to have a delegation added to your user account or to a user account. So someone has come to you as the admin and said, I need to delegate this account. I want someone else to manage my account on my behalf. You go to your active users. And you click on the account that we want to delegate access to. I'm just looking for one here that I might be able to use. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. And we're going to go to the Mail tab. Under the Mail tab, you'll see you've got this mailbox permissions and someone can read and manage permissions someone can send as permissions send on behalf of permissions so we've got someone this this mailbox already has read and manage permissions set so let's go and have a look and see who's who's allowed to oh that one has to go there we go this is great i can go and clean this up so you will see here that uh, this user has access to read and manage permissions on, on, on the account. We've also got this user here that doesn't have an email address. So what we're going to do is we're just going to remove that user. This is something I should have done uh, when, when we removed the license from this user. That's on me. This is one of the things that's admins we need to make sure we do all the time. Great for this demonstration though. So to do that, we just check the user we want to remove the permission from and say remove permissions and they're gone. We just need to wait. Okay. So now under this one, we've only got the one user that has permission. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say who that is, but they've got permission to use this account. I'm going to add permissions for my own user to be able to look at this account. I'll give you some demonstrations on how it works and then I'm going to remove all the permissions again. So we're going to say add permissions. 
you tick the user who, who you want to give access to and you say add. And we wait, takes a little bit. That user has now been added. Now, please note at the top here, it says changes can take up to 60 minutes to take effect. It can be a little slow. So if you do this and then you log in and you can't get access, just give it a few minutes. It might just take a little bit to get through. Okay. I have added, let's go back to this account, the ability to read and manage permissions. To, to read and manage the account. How do I get in to do this? So that was my user I added. So I'm going to go to my Outlook account, outlook.office.com. I use the online version. You can do this with your desktop app. You, can, you should also be able to do this on the mobile app as well. Again, to get into this user account, we need to go up to our profile icon on the top right hand corner. And we need to say open another mailbox. Type in the mailbox that you think you have permission to manage and click open. Okay, so this is going to be uh, blurred out, of course. And from here, you'll see that I now have access to all of the inbox, all, all of the folders. For the client, uh, for, for the user, I've got access to their email. I can read their email. I can send on behalf. I can send on behalf of this user. If I click new, it's going to go out on behalf of, um, of, of the user. Let's have a look. You'll see here it says which user I can send on behalf of. Now, it should also say when it goes out that it was sent on behalf of, of, of the user, not, uh, not just by the user. And that way you know that someone else is, is sent, has sent the, the email. Sorry, I don't mean to just blur over that. So that's how you can uh, give someone like just access to carte blanche, at carte blanche access to the inbox. Let's have a look at what other options we have. So let's, um, I'm in the wrong inbox. It doesn't matter. I'll come back to that. Okay, so back in our admin panel, I'm going to go back into the user that we were just we just modified. I'm going to come down to it'll come up in a minute. Mail. We're waiting for the mailbox permissions to come up. I am going to remove my user from here. And we're going to go back and we're going to do send as permissions. I'm going to add my user. Again, it's going to give us the message that says, okay, these users can send emails as this account originating name will not appear. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is I actually need to um, just go here. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm just going to go to the right account. There we go. If I say new mail and then I come down here, I can say send us another email address and I can choose that email address here and I can send on behalf of that user and it, it, it will send out I can send from here I don't believe at this point I can actually open their email account anymore because I have removed that ability let's find out let's find out what I can do Right, I'm just going to get you to delete that bit. Okay, so from here, so 
I can send as the user from here and that will allow me to send as the user. I will shortly not be able to access their inbox because I don't have that permission anymore. It's still being taken off. But from here, I can send as this user. So that's how that works there. So just to remind you how I did that, I went click, I, I logged into my own inbox. I said new email, I said send, and I chose from other email addresses. We're in the from box, chose from other email addresses. Now, if the from box is missing on your account, I'm going to point you back to one of the previous email, uh, podcasts I did where, where, where that we managed to get that to come up full time. That's an admin setting you can do, but if it's missing from here and you don't have that ability yet, go to options. It's options. Right. I just got to get get it right. Go to options and then you'll see right at the top here, we've got show BCC, show CC, show from. You can uncheck that and it will disappear or you can check it and it will come up. So if you are missing it, it should be under the options bar. You can make it appear full time. And I've done that in another podcast, which I will link in the notes for this one. Choose, your, choose who you're sending it from and then compose your email. That's what that set of permissions does. So let's just delete that email. The last one we want, going to go back in and manage the user again. Going to go to the mail tab, mailbox permissions. Uh, same again, we can do send on behalf of permissions rather than, let, let's go have a look, let's remove that user. So to remove a user, you go into the permissions you want to remove them from, click on it, say remove permissions, say yes. Back, now we're going to do send on behalf of permissions. We're going to click and add my name. And we'll have a look at what the instructions say at the top here. So these users can send emails with both their account name and their mailbox name. These emails will show that they were sent on behalf of the user. So you can do that and that will allow you to send from your own inbox as well. Okay, so I'm going to remove myself from here because I really don't want to keep permissions up. There we go. Good practice is if you are removing a license, if you've got someone leaving, uh, if they change roles, make sure you come in and check what permissions they have on which accounts and change them over, please. Don't leave them there with everything. Let me have a chat to you. There we go. Okay, so there is a lot of flexibility within Microsoft 365. Uh, Google Workspace does it as well. It does it slightly differently. I'm sure I will get to those eventually. Uh, but you can delegate access to your inbox account or your, your email account. You don't have to give someone uh, access to your full Microsoft account that way. You can only give them access to your mailbox. They can manage email on your behalf. They can help your productivity. They can help be responsive uh, and you are going to be protecting your privacy and your security that way as well. Do you guys, have you ever used delegation in your business? Does it work for you? What What are the hints and tips that you can give others around this? I'd, I'd love to know. I am the techie person. I'm the person that goes, yeah, we can do that. I love it when my clients come back to me and say, you know, we're using this and these are the things that we're doing with it. And I'm like, that's really cool because I would never have thought to do that. So I'm the techie person. Some, sometimes it, it takes a, an admin person to say to me, you know, we could do this. Like, oh, I had no idea. Leave comments wherever you are watching or listening to this video. I would love to know what 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 your thoughts are, what what what's worked for you, what hasn't worked. You can come and join me on my Locals community, askcharlieletham.locals.com. If this video was of use to you, please give it a like. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so you find out when I drop more content. I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.
Hey there, thanks so much for tuning in to Rise and Shine, your daily business tech boost. I hope today's episode gave you some actionable insights that will make your business tech work smarter for you. If you found value, be sure to subscribe, leave a review and share it with other small business owners who could use a daily boost. For more tips, tools and resources, visit www.askcharlieleatham.com. Until next time, keep rising, keep shining and let's make tech simple together.